Thank you to our sponsors for today's video, Nokian Tires, Amber, and Star Charge. Nokian Tires is a leader in safety and sustainability. Maximize performance and efficiency with their made-in-USA all-season tires and their dedicated Hakapalita EV winter line from the inventor of the winter tire. Learn more at nokiantires.com slash EV. This video is also brought to you by Amber. Amber offers a modern extended warranty for your Tesla's battery and more without the burden of long-term contracts or upfront payments. Check out the link in the description below to browse their plan options and get started with a free over-the-air diagnostic check. This video is also brought to you by Star Charge, the largest EV charging manufacturer in the world and is also a provider of residential and commercial battery storage and microgrid solutions. Hello, good morning, and welcome to another Out of Spec Reviews video. You join me actually in Germany, but I have some exciting news and exciting charging curve to share with you guys. Of course, those of you who watch this channel, we're all nerds. We do a lot of Rivian stuff on this channel. And for those of you who have been following some of the Rivian updates for the second generation of R1S and R1T, I made a whole super long nerd video on that. Uh, there is a new standard battery pack and it is uh, LFP, it's lithium iron phosphate. And we don't know much about that battery pack, or at least we didn't, but now we do. Uh, my friend just took delivery of his and I walked him through the full procedure on how to do a zero to 100% charging test. And this worked out wonderfully. We now finally have a baseline full charging curve for the standard LFP battery pack for Rivian. We're gonna go through the voltage range on the battery pack. I'm gonna explain some of the, the benefits of LFP, why I think this might be the battery to go for if you're buying a new R1T or R1S. And then I just want to clarify, this is pre-update. Rivian has already promised that sometime throughout the month in July, maybe August of 2024, there will be a huge software update to improve the charging performance that we're seeing here. So this is very Gen 1 uh, charging curve, feels pretty prototypey in my opinion anyway, I'll walk you through it. Um, but at least we have the baseline curve of the LFP. As soon as the software update rolls out, we're going to run through the same procedures and I'll be able to show you the improvements that Rivian really has to make and will make to the charging performance of the LFP. I've mentioned in my full review that the LFP might actually turn out to be the best charging Rivian and I'll work or I'll at least explain that to you in this video. So without much delay, let's get into all the nerd stuff. I'll walk you through the testing procedures, a little bit about the car, and then of course we'll evaluate the charging performance. Before we get into evaluating the charging performance, we should all get in the comment section and thank Chris, one of our viewers who took delivery of his R1S to literally take hours out of his day to provide this information to you. It's also not incredibly long-term relevant because Rivian is going to be updating the charging performance of the LFP in a short period of time. But like I always say, we have to review what's on the market today, what people are actually taking delivery, and then we will update in the near future when hopefully Rivian does an update for their charging performance of the standard battery pack. So uh, shout out to Chris. This dude is awesome. Huge EV enthusiast, has some awesome cars, and really I can't thank him enough for doing this. Um, I also want to say a huge shout out to my friend Brandon Flash, who helped with a lot of the preparation and getting data from this charging session. Um, we used actually a one of the first installed Alpitronic hyperchargers in America for this test. It was installed at Electric Island in Portland, Oregon, where it's sort of a, a testing hub, uh, mostly for trucks actually, but um, it's, a, it's open to the public. So Chris was able to bring his R1 there. We were able to get the data off the Alpitronic and it all worked out really well. So we have like so much good data in terms of the voltage curve of the battery pack, the current that it's pulling in, of course, the total power over um, uh, state of charge, and of course, time and kilowatt hours delivered. I have all the info. Before we get into that, I just want to walk you through the three battery packs on offer for the Generation 2 R1s. The first, the one we're testing here, is the standard uh, standard option battery. It's an LFP lithium iron phosphate battery pack, and it has a usable energy component Rivian rates at about 92.5 kilowatt hours. That's Again, these are big vehicles. That's probably pretty low if you're going to be doing a lot of towing, a lot of long distance, but for most 
Driving around town, even the occasional road trip, I actually think this might be the sweet spot battery. Uh, the next battery up is what they call the large pack, and this is 109.4 kilowatt hour usable. No one knows anything about the large pack. We don't know if it's a max pack that's software limited or has two modules taken out. I've asked Rivian many times and they just dodge the question. They will not tell us. They are not ready to communicate about the large pack. They have not built any large packs, which makes me think, will they ever build a large pack? What is it going to be? I don't know. Um, that I, I just wish Rivian would be a little bit more communicative on what is going on with the large battery pack because that's just a giant question mark. Of course, when I have information, I will share that with you. Then the Max Pack, which we're used to, we just had an R1S test car, Generation 1 with the Max Pack, same roughly 141.5 kilowatt hour usable rated capacity. I think we've pulled 142 out of it. Uh, and so those are the three battery packs that sort of carry over. The large and the Max Pack, Rivian claims has a new battery enclosure but uses the same cooling strategy and it's all roughly um, similar to the outgoing models. The standard LFP battery, this is actually a battery that I believe is made uh, in China and then the module, the whole entire assembly is shipped to normal to be installed inside the vehicles. Um, this is not the first LFP battery pack that Rivian is using in their vehicles. They've been using LFP lithium iron phosphate in their vans. The van video that I made, the Rivian commercial van that used a LFP battery pack. And interestingly, in the van, they would always charge to 100%, which we'll get into why that's actually good or bad. We'll, we'll talk about that. Um, but interestingly, in the R1, they let you set a charge limit, just like the standard high nickel chemistry uh, uh, battery packs on offer. So that is um, curious. Anyway, uh, let's get into the curve. I don't want to delay you too much if you just want to see that. And then I want to talk about some of the limitations and advantages of LFP. Uh, before we get into the curve, I just want to walk you through some of the setup process that Chris had to do here. And it was really interesting. So first, we wanted to make sure that we could get the charger to activate, get it to charge, and all was good. So he drove it over to Electric Island, plugged it into the Alpitronic, and we're like, oh, full rip. Everything is good. My instructions to him were then navigate to the nearest or even that station high power DC charger as long as the vehicle thinks it's going to get full power which the maximum stated charging power of the LFP is 200 kilowatts unlike the high nickel chemistries those are 220 kilowatts as communicated by Rivian uh, so that'd be for large and max pack um, and so I was like you know just just precondition navigate to the station and just drive gently we don't want to hot spot the battery pack we don't want to overheat it we don't want to full throttle it just gently high highway cruise uh, down to uh, about 1% state of charge, 2%, something like that. Now, this was a brand new R1S. It had, I don't think, ever been full charged or full drained. And one of the problems with LFP, which we can talk about in a bit more, is it has a very flat voltage curve, and it's very hard for the vehicles to know at what exact state of charge you're at. Uh, and so as Chris was doing loops to drain the battery pack to zero, uh, he was at like 1%, six miles left. He's like, oh, I'll just drive around the parking lot one more, and the car just went, oh, nope, zero, off. It's going down real fast now. A big jump right there. I like how the uh, estimator says five miles when we only have three miles left. One mile left. Uh oh. Just limp it along. Oh boy. Uh oh. Zero percent. It's going fast. Uh oh. It's in region. Oh boy. Oh boy. LP calibration, maybe? A little bit of downhill, thank God. I'm sitting at zero for a while now. Temps 107 still. Come on, car. You can do it. So close. So close. Here's the charging station. Nobody at our charger, thank God. So it's really important that you have a calibrated battery pack with LFP. We just spoke about that. If you guys haven't seen our Sprinter range test or the uh, eSprinter climb to the top of Mount Blue Sky, um, that was LFP. And I went through the battery calibration process on that vehicle as well. So basically we started completely dead and we charged it to completely full. So let's get into the data. But that was the setup process is exactly how we do it. And we had a 
a charger that we know could deliver the power the Alpitronic hyperchargers can do pretty much 600 amps flat out nonstop, which is awesome it's going to be uh, a pretty ubiquitous charger i hope in america uh, mercedes i think the first official announcement is the mercedes charging network you know a huge you know, get ready. Mercedes is building out a huge network. They're going to be using pretty much Alpitronics for all the new stations going forwards. It's exciting. Still, you know, in Europe, Alpitronics are everywhere. In the US, they still have to prove themselves, but we're off to a good start. Let's just say that. So let's get into the data. Okay, guys, well, let's evaluate the charging performance of the LFP Rivian. So if you take a look, I've pulled up a spreadsheet. I have some data that came straight off the charger right here, and I'll leave this um, spreadsheet linked so you guys can see the exact voltage and current at the time level. So right here we have um, basically this chart going on a, I don't know, a thousand different poles of time throughout the entire charging session. On the right side, we have state of charge. I've made it simple just by looking at one metric, which is state of charge over charging power. And again, just remember, this is the very early charging curve of the LFP. So one thing that I really like to see, of course, before we even dig into this is what is the operating voltage of the battery pack? And with lithium iron phosphate, you have a big drop off at the very bottom end of the pack, a little bit of a rise right at the top. And then you'll notice the middle, this blue line, it's very, very flat voltage operating range across the meat of the charging profile. And you can see it's basically dead as full 400 volts 390 and then full is 450 and that's a really nice operating range it's actually very similar to the nmc chemistry uh, or our nca chemistry that that rivian uses the high nickel chemistries and um essentially what's cool about that is there's no need to reprogram the electronics the dc to dc all of the uh, individual components actually work uh, with every battery pack where they don't need special components to work in a different voltage range for the lfp so they definitely did that on purpose and it seems to work really well right now the maximum current that the charging session pulled was 470 amps not quite the 500 that the uh, high nickel chemistries pulled but i wouldn't be surprised if we see um, even close to 500 amps uh, and maybe even higher charging power than 200 kilowatts. You can see basically from zero to 25%, this thing just sits at 200 kilowatts all the way through. And that is the stated maximum charge rate from Rivian. So it's perhaps we may never see 500 amps. And then you'll see just this staircase charging profiles it comes down um, to at 50 percent state of charge doing 128 kilowatts right now i expect that throughout the um, software updates this is going to get smoothed out i think it's going to hold 200 kilowatts way deeper into the charging session and then have a really nice program discharge or i should say charging ramp down to um, you know low power interestingly up top at about 85 percent it goes to 30 kilowatts and just sits there all the way to the end you can see it basically does a constant uh, current request here at the end and as the pack voltage spikes towards the end we actually get a dip or a rise in power level up to 32 kilowatts at 99% and then boom, shut off. Now, the interesting thing with the uh, LFP, of course, is it needs to remain calibrated. And so that is something on Chris's truck, like I mentioned, it dipped from like six miles indicated left of range to zero right at the very end. So if you have one of these vehicles, it's probably advantageous to show it the top and maybe even the bottom of the battery pack fairly frequently i would say you know definitely want to full charge this one you don't want to leave it at a hundred percent same care principles apply across all the different chemistries but they do need to be full charged uh, to calibrate and i think a lot of people think you can just leave lfp batteries at a hundred percent all the time which you probably can just because they have so much higher cycle life to them as well so overall this is the curve it is state of charge over power and then you have the um of course, uh, the amperage with voltage on this particular graph. I'll leave this all linked. I just want to mention that throughout the charging session, delivered to from the charger to the vehicle was roughly 100 kilowatt hours. It took just over an hour uh, to make this happen. So you can see it started at 225 and it ended at 340. So an hour and 15 minutes or so, zero to full. Very similar to other LFP packs that I've charged in terms of time from zero to full. However, with the software update, it should get even quicker. I'm really hoping to see something in that 45 minutes to one hour 
uh, from what zero to 100% charging. I think this is a battery pack that yes, has less usable capacity than their high nickel packs, the large and the max pack. But if you can use more of the battery more of the time, then you're not actually at much of a penalty going for the standard battery. So I really hope Rivian dials this in. I can't wait to test it on the newer software update. But um, again, you'll always have a bit more delivered to the car because it's going to be running cooling. Uh, and that is something that uh, one last note I should mention just on the thermal management of LFP. It seems like the cooling and heating strategy, of course, is totally different than their other battery packs, and it might even be more robust. They may have more cooling power during fast charging sessions, and certainly most of the preconditioning on the high nickel packs is warming up the battery, or excuse me, cooling down the battery from charger to charger. You've seen in our Race to Vegas's and others, as soon as we unplug from one charger and head to the next, it's running full cooling for hours on end, and then you get these huge gradient temperatures uh, with that battery pack just due to their single plate cooling design and it's really not good. I think a lot of those problems are solved here with this battery would be my guess. And my impression is a lot of the um, preconditioning will actually be heating for LFP rather than cooling. So I'm really excited to dig more into this. I can't wait to spend some time with an LFP Rivian and really start to learn the intricacies of it. But there you go, 100 kilowatt hours pretty much delivered from the charger to the vehicle. Again, 92 usable. Of course, there's always gonna be some difference there, some inefficiencies and of course running extra extra cooling during the charging process. I hope you guys enjoyed this terribly shot, you know, video. Sorry, I just did this while I was at Germany at an Audi event. Nothing I can really talk about, but um, yep. Anyway, so there you go. That's the Rivian charging curve. And on the LFP battery pack, I'll update you as soon as I can when the update comes. But there you go. Huge shout out to Chris. Say thanks in the comments and we'll see you on another one again soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>